Sandra, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Graham at Queerty. Happy Pride. Thank you. I feel proud all year long, now more than ever with, you know, especially the upcoming election. We have to really be on our game. And I urge everyone to get out and vote for Joe Biden this year. Take control of your destiny, of the country's and the world's destiny, and keep us on track because... It's no joke. I agree. This election in particular is an important one, a really big one. There's so much that you've seen and experienced and witnessed. You've done stand-up, you've done theater, you've done TV, movies, written books, recorded albums, you have a podcast. You've always been very open about who you are and people really feel like they know you. So I'm curious, what is one thing that most people don't know about you? Well, there's a lot of things people don't know about me. I mean, in many ways, um, I play things close to the vest just because... I think as a good entertainer and performer and artist, um, everything should come out through your work and there should only be a certain line that you come up to. If you're coming to see somebody perform, you want to know that they're taking you on a, an unexpected journey because of who they are, because they, they've perfected what they do. And that's sort of my approach to being a performer. So there's a lot of things people don't know because I don't think that they need to know. For as long as I can remember, you've been publicly out. Uh, you were in many ways, and I, I think you still are, kind of one of the very few loud and proud bisexual celebrities. So I'm curious, when did you first realize, hey, I'm not straight? And were you always comfortable with your identity? Was there ever a time when you struggled with it, as so many queer people do? No, I've never, I've never struggled with my identity because I think the most important part of, of my identity, it was sort of like, in descending order was number one, being a woman, number two, being slightly outrageous and funny and crazy. And number three, just like sort of embracing people in general. I mean, I've just found people who are great, great. And, and if that happens to be a woman, great. If it happens to be a man, would I say I leaned more in terms of my sexuality towards women? Yeah, absolutely. But I've had like, intense relationships with men and I really love men and I, I mean when they're great they're great the next question I had is one that we're asking all of our pride 50 honorees what is your queer superpower my queer superpower is that I can walk down the street and encounter just about any person or situation and enchant those those people I have the psychological emotional skills to like soothe situations and temper people which is sort of like you know taking a beat and seeing what the situation is and diffusing it do you think that's what's what's helped you have such a long career and so much longevity is your ability to do that and connect with people and kind of soothe and diffuse yeah i do actually because especially with live performing every time you walk on stage i mean sometimes i'll do two shows in a night and you're done with the first show and you think oh wow that crowd was so great but that's the new crowd is not going to be that crowd anymore, right? So you're walking on stage and you have to like completely put aside all your past experiences. And even if you've had 10,000 of them, you have to recreate the moment with the audience that's in front of you and be present. And I think that's a great lesson about life is like being in the moment constantly. Whatever you do in life, you got to like step into the moment and be there and be present. That's really great advice. And I think it's a it's a good thing for all of us to remember is to just kind of stay in the moment, stay engaged. It's so important, especially I think with within our own community, within the queer community, to do to do that. Absolutely. It's again such a joy to have you here and and we're so happy that you were uh, part well, of our I just, want, I just want to add one more thing. Speaking of 50, I just want to add that I'm I'm very excited because it was 50 years ago on Cinco de Mayo that I moved to LA from from Arizona and started my career. Um, 1974. So I'm very into like dates and very, it's sort of fortuitous and meant to be that I would be included. My first summer in LA, 13 times I went to see the Rocky Horror Show at the Roxy uh, live. And that's where I met all my first group of friends. One friend in particular named Jack Foster, who was funny as hell. And he used to always say, you slay me. And heartbreakingly, he was my first friend who, who died of AIDS in, in 1985. We just were drawn to each other because of our, you know, like-mindedness. So I think that's a beautiful thing about 
the LGBTQ plus community. We're like magnets and metal. We're attracted to each other and we're drawn to each other. And we forge friendships that last a lifetime. And so I just think it's, I think it's a beautiful thing to be a part of this community and have that sort of celebratory feeling all year long and then to like cap it off with, with pride. So thank you for including me. And um, I'm just really proud to be a part of the community and, and really understand how hard it is for a lot of people to get where they're going.